Today I will show you how to turn on the headlights in Photoshop. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today we will have a lot of fun creating some fake headlights for your vehicle to make your photos even more interesting. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, this is our photo for today and we will turn on some headlights here. So let's start. First thing what I like to do is to create a new layer and let's zoom it a little bit and create first light source. It's something like a light bulb here. Inside I will use a white brush, 100% opacity, a little bit softer. Actually it can be all the way soft, 0% hardness and just create some basic shape like this is a light bulb. All right, and now we need to add some layer properties to this layer here. Double click on the layer and we have some layer style. And we will go and add outer glow. Wow, it's already looking better. So you have outer glow, blend mode, it's on screen, leave it on screen. You can change the color, you can use maybe yellowish if you want, reddish, etc. I like this bluish kind of color, something like so, and I will leave it. You have these sliders here, this one, let's go all the way down. This is a spread slider. It's, it's not affected until the size of the outer glow is selected. So we have the size, we can control the size of the glow and the spread of that glow. As you can see, we can create some really, really fun effect out of this. So we will choose something like this maybe and let me see. This is okay. Here you have the range. It's something like a feather thing. Let's leave it around 50. You have the quality here, actually those curves that give you a different kind of results, etc. You can play with that and find something interesting if you want, but I will leave on default and press OK. Let's unzoom it and this is the first light source. It doesn't look so much for now, but we will fix it. So this is the light bulb. Okay. And I will transform this layer by pressing Control Command T on a keyboard and go right click to a warp, to warp it a little bit, just to change the shape of it, to have the impression that this is inside here. So let me see, like this, it's not bad. Maybe to move this a little bit more here and let's press OK to see. Yeah, that's much better. Maybe I can rotate it a little bit and warp it just a touch like so. Let me see. All right, and for now it's good. I can blur this a little bit by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just blur it to touch maybe 1.54 pixels and that's nice for a start. We can move it, nudge it if we want, but it's really nice position. All right, the next step is to add a new layer and use a pen tool. You can use a lasso tool or anything you want, but I will use a pen tool to create a pad for a light beam. This will be our light beam pad. So let's create something like this. And when we are finished with pet, just press control or command with enter to load the selection out of that pet and fill it with, you can go to add, edit, fill and fill it with white color. Or you can just press alt or option key and backspace. That's much faster. So now let's deselect control command D and we have this crazy light beam. And of course we don't want it to be like that. All right, let's rename it. Light beam, all right? And now let me see, let's blur it. We need to blur this light beam to have a little bit better effect. So we can use different kinds of blurs. We can use a Gaussian blur, we can use a box blur, we can use a blur gallery and use a field blur and so on. I will show you the different kind of results. First thing what I like to do is to convert this layer to a smart object to have more control over the blur I want to apply. So let's use blur and Gaussian blur. And if you want to use this kind of blur, 
it's really nice. We have really, really interesting effect. And this is pretty much okay. We can use this kind of effect if we want. Or we can use filter blur. Where is it? Box, box, box. Box blur, it's here. And we can use a box blur. It's a little bit more interesting because uh, this kind of uh, box blur shape, this uh, like outer glow effect. And I like this blur better than a Gaussian blur for this kind of effect. So you can use the box blur and this is really nice. So let's leave it for now. Or you can uncheck that and use filter blur gallery and use a field blur. And this is a really nice effect too. You have this point here and you can blur, set the amount of the blur or go, go here to the slider and just set the right amount of the blur you prefer, like so. But if you add another pin right here and add even more blur, you can con control actually this light beam, the spread of the light beam. And by moving this pin, you can control the spread of the light beam. For example, I want here a less blur like so okay and now by moving this we can control how this light beam is going out of this vehicle it's really nice we can go back with it forward leave it like here or do anything you want so i will choose something like this and press okay and wait a few seconds for photoshop to render it nice and we have a box blur if we turn on the box blur too, we will have double effect. But let me show you. This is the box blur. This is the field blur. Just a second. Yeah, this is the field blur. It's a little bit better than a box blur for my preference. But you can do whatever you want. It's, it's not so important. So now I want to add a gradient uh, layer mask to this, to this effect because I want this part of the beam to be a little bit more opaque. So let's add a layer mask and let's use a gradient tool. And I want to switch it to the black color. So let's use the black color as a foreground color and just go and draw some gradient here. And it's really, really nice. We can even change the opacity of that maybe to 80 or 75% something like so and you can see before and after really really nice effect and we have here a light bulb with its own shine with its own light around it and it's really really nice before and after so we can if this light beam it's too wide maybe you can go to that layer and just go to transform it control command t and because we are in a smart filter just press ok and just make it smaller maybe like so and maybe make it longer and let's wait a few seconds that's it before and after before and after well i like this a little bit more wider effect so the next step is to add another uh, light uh, to, to to turn on actually the right headlight here on the car and i will just duplicate those two layers with Control command j and just move this right here make it smaller right this is the warning that i'm using the smart filter so let's put it right here right wait a few seconds for to render it nice and i will lower the opacity a lot because this part of the image it's in a dark and let's leave it like so and let's go to the light bulb here and lower that opacity too like that and it's really nice let's tweak it just a little bit right and maybe rotate it oops let's let's rotate it around this point something like this press ok and let me see it's really really nice all right another thing what i like uh, to add here to sell the effect that uh, uh, headlights are turned on it's to add here just around uh, just about the background new curves adjustment layer and make some things brighter so like this and just add a layer mask by holding art alter option key to add a black layer mask what's the problem here 
Mm -hmm. I already has the layer mask. Sorry, just invert the layer mask with control command I. Sometimes, sometimes this happens. All right, no problem. And now let's use a brush, be on a keyboard for a brush and use a white brush, maybe 20 or 10% of S, we'll see really soft one and just go here and make some things brighter. Like here, this bumper here, just make it brighter. Maybe this part here a little bit, especially this part and make brighter this part of the floor. Uh, well, let's use 20% of ST and make this part and this part and this part of the car just that brighter. And that's really, really nice. So now if I group all of this together and let's rename it to headlight. Okay. Uh, I spell it wrong. Okay, and now we have a really nice effect. Turn on and off, on and off. It's really, really nice. One more thing that we can add here to emphasize the effect and to make this even more interesting, it's a lens flare. How to add a lens flare? I will show you two interesting ways. First way, it's from Photoshop, filter renders and lens flare. And for that, I want to use new layer and fill it with black right by pressing control or command key and backspace because the black is background color and just put it in a screen blending mode because i don't want black color to affect the image but i need something as a background for that lens flare right and go to the filter render and lens flare and now i don't know where i need to put this lens flare and i will show you a really nice uh, trick how to Put this like lens flare exactly where you want it's like this first let's hide this layer and merge everything together with shift ctrl alt e or shift command option e on a mac and now let's go to the render filter render and lens flare and now you have exactly precise way how to put it let's put it right here right and you can choose this type of lens, this type of lens, this type of lens, and type of lens you want, the brightness of that, and so on. I will use 35 millimeter and put the brightness around 30 or so. Press OK, and it's really nice. Maybe let's undo it and maybe make it brighter, like so. And now it's on this layer. We cannot move it. We cannot do a lot of things with that. But now we can delete this layer and just go to our lens flare layer and go again to the filter and just click control F or click on first thing here and the lens flare effect will be applied on the exact same position where it was before. So this is really nice. We can duplicate this layer if we want to emphasize the effect as you can see here and maybe on the second layer we can delete, we can delete this part of a flare because it's maybe too much. And if you don't like it, you can go here and erase it here too, just to have this, this flare here, maybe lower this opacity of the first one or maybe hide it, depend of your preference, but I like it like so. And here you can see really, really nice effect before and after, before and after. And that's one way how you can add a lens flare in Photoshop by using a Photoshop filters and lens flare plugin. So let me show you now another method that I really like it and I use it all the time when I'm uh, dealing with the lens flare. It's one plugin from a red giant. It's, it's not free but if you're dealing all the time with the lens flare and things like that maybe you want to buy it. So let's go to another image this one and this car here and let me show you. Let's use filters and red giant software, no light factory. And here you have a lot of different lens flares, really, really nice uh, software piece of software, this plugin for Photoshop, and you can use it in uh, Premiere, After Effects and so on. And here you have really a lot of options. I will not cover this now, just want to mention that this is a really nice plugin that I really like it. And maybe I like this basic spotlight for this car. As you can see, 
can move this and here you have a lot of options for these spotlights for all, all uh, settings about that. Here you can make it brighter and you can scale it, but maybe like this, it's nice. You can change the color of that and so on and so on. And here you have exactly the same problem like with the Photoshop filter render and lens flare. You uh, will put it on this layer, but I want to put it on a separate layer on a black one with screen blending mode. And if I go now here to the filter and to this no light factory, what is really nice, let me show you, the, uh, you will have something like this. You will have that black background and you don't know where to put this flare. But here you can choose what is your background and I will use this as my background. And now I can exactly see where I want to add this this effect. So let's go again and add another for this, this, and we have our headlight turn on, on and off, on and off. It's really, really nice plugin. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you liked this tutorial and that you learned something new out of it. This was really fun and easy tutorial how to add fake lights to your vehicles. Actually, you can add, uh, you can use the same method to add lights to some street lights or flashlights or maybe to emphasize lights of a candle or a light bulb, anything you want. So have fun, experiment and you will achieve really, really nice and creative results using this method. If you have any questions at all regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye.